An Aryan brother is without a care. He walks where the weak and heartless won't dare. And if by chance he should stumble or lose control, his brothers are there to help reach his goal. For a worthy brother, no need is too great. He need not ask, the fulfillment's his fate. For an Aryan brother, death holds no fear. Vengeance will be his, through his brother still here. For the brotherhood means just what he implies. A brother's a brother, till that brother dies. And if he is loyal and never lost faith, in each brother's heart there will always be a place. So a brother I am, and will always be, even after my life is taken away from me. I'll lie down content, knowing I stood, head held high, walking proud in the brotherhood. People that are older and know what time White it is, made. it's just business. Yeah. Greetings and welcome back. It's your host, Gabe Morales. We've been covering Aryan Brotherhood members over the past six decades or so. Today, we're going to get into the H last names, as in the hole. There really is no holes anymore in prison. That comes from back in the old days when they literally put you in a hole in the wall or in a box, as seen in Kuhan Luke, and you had one bucket to piss in and one to drink out of. Better not confuse them. The hole is prison slang for administrative segregation, basically 23-hour lockdown. You're not allowed to have much property or not much of anything. But these guys, having a lot of time on their hands, can do some pretty ingenious stuff. And as they say, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Shanks can also be made from plastics, deodorant containers, shampoo bottles, and styrofoam cups. Homemade spears like these killed a guard at San Quentin. And this prison gang member, while locked up at the state's most secure prison at Pelican Bay, shows how he makes a deadly crossbow out of underwear elastic, paper, and plastic eating utensils. They're capable of uh, going all the way through the neck. If I could get an eye shot, I could drive it in as far as the skull would allow it to hit. It is designed to kill from behind a cell door. Somebody had mentioned in the last episode that Jimmy Fu Griffin was a hell's angel. And indeed, when I was searching for his picture, I couldn't find it. And it was under my biker files. But the California Gang Task Force documented him as being an Aryan Brotherhood associate. And as I commented back, quite a few Hells Angels and other bikers were AB associates. In fact, I believe the Diamond Tooth Gang consisted of various outlaw bikers who did not have a diamond in their tooth, but a piece of glass, which was real common amongst bikers back in the 1950s and 60s. Individuals like Doug the Thug were said to have dual membership in the Hells Angels and Aryan Brotherhood. And here we see a picture of Sonny Barger at Folsom Prison, and I was told, there's at least one Aryan Brotherhood member in this bunch. It was very common, especially back in the late 60s and 70s, for Hells Angels and Aryans to work out on the white pile together. The white piles were always very segregated when I worked at Folsom. And even then, biker white dudes and Aryan Brotherhood types and associates would work out in one part of the white pile. The Mexicans would work out in the middle, where even they were segregated. The Serenios, closest to the whites and the Norteños on the other side of the middle towards the blacks, and the blacks would work out on the other side. I remember the weights were painted red, white, and blue, and we didn't segregate them. They segregated themselves. It should be noted that in the late 70s and early 80s, there was some friction between Hells Angels and the Aryan Brotherhood. As I understand, there was at least a couple homicides between the two groups. And then there was the case of Hells Angel Chapter President Michael Farrell, who was killed after being stabbed in the neck, chest, and back, and shot four times from behind at a San Leandro bar on June 6, 1989. Another Hells Angel member was wounded in that attack. Police stated that O'Farrell's killing may have been the result of a power struggle between the HAs and the Aryan Brotherhood in the East Bay. Two Aryan Brotherhood members were charged with O'Farrell's homicide, and that was Aaron Jerry Marsh and Michael Tank Shepard, who were arrested in the following weeks. Shepard allegedly admitted guilt to his lawyer. Marsh was incarcerated at Pelican Bay Prison, where on July 25, 1997, his cellmate, Gary Luttrell, killed him after Marsh allegedly refused an order from the AB membership to murder another inmate. Allegedly, this was not for his homicide of O'Farrell. Hank Shepard eventually committed suicide. 
by hanging himself in his cell at the Santa Ana Central Jail in Orange County in December 2004, shortly after pleading guilty in the A.B. Rico case. I've covered outlaw motorcycle gangs in other videos on this channel. You can often get some very defensive and sometimes outright hostile comments that motorcycle clubs are not gangs. Like I say, it's okay to disagree with me, just make sure it's respectful. Or adios to you being on my channel. Indeed. 99% of MC members are not thugs or drug dealers, etc. But you see, that 1% patch often makes a difference as far as criminal activity. While I was more into lowriders growing up, I did run into a lot of bikers via my mom and dad in the 1960s and 70s and even after. Most, I'd say, are very nice people. And I even talked to some COA members this past weekend at a local event on the Big Island in Hawaii. They know my background and are always very respectful. Heck, some don't even have a parking ticket on the record during the last 20 years. But some bikers have been involved in crimes, and I think Rico's in criminal cases and convictions against some major MC members prove that point. So anyways, I thought I'd just clarify that before we start this episode. Those of you who have been to prison, I think know what I'm talking about. Today, I'll start off with Stephen Trashman Hadley, who I understand was from the west side of Los Angeles and had an A number. I understand that he was with Dan Kavanaugh on August 27, 1972 at CIM's Palm Hall when he slashed West Familiar members Bruce Weddle Morgan and Juan Masanas Colon. I understand that after that, he was transferred to DVI, where he was hit by NF shot callers Fig Avlios and Hobo Holden on December 20th, 1972, and died from his injuries. This was a major event in the war between the Aryan Brotherhood and Mexican Mafia against the Nuestra Familia. There was Donald Hale, who I believe was out of the Bay Area, and had a number as an Alpha 88892. Now, I've seen many people document him as being Aryan Brotherhood. I know that he was a member of the American Nazi Party, which were often allies of the ABs, but his big claim to fame was he and Fred Mendren killed a former NF named Fred Charles Castillo in 1972. Understand that Castillo had been pulled down for peace talks with the Emmy as well as other North Familiar members. However, it appears that Castillo had distanced himself from the NF organization and was considered what they call a hermit at that time. However, I believe the NF still considered that murder as a disrespect to their organization. I showed that Donald Hale paroled in 1993, there was a Matthew Cycle Hall at a Manhattan Beach, which is a beach town in Los Angeles County. He was considered to be an Aryan Brotherhood associate and was a member of Public Enemy Number no. 1, also known as Peni. Understand that he was heavy into methamphetamine use, which means he was known for being a tweaker. Understand he caught a robbery beef in 1993 and had an assault with a deadly weapon charge in 1999. He was found to be a felon in possession of a firearm in 2007 and was known for running drugs. In fact, when the most recent RICO indictment came down in 2019, he committed suicide in a Costa Rica jail cell so that he would not have to face what would likely be years in federal prison. There was Billy Ray Hamilton, who was a very active Aryan Brotherhood member for many years, under B number 89126, and I understand was housed at Old Folsom Prison when he met an individual named Clarence Ray Allen, who was Native American. Apparently, in 1974, Allen planned a burglary of a Franz Market in Fresno and hired two men that worked for him at his security guard business to help out with the robbery and also arranged for the help of a young lady named Mary Sue Kitts to get the keys to the store from Brian Schillitowitz the son of the market owner. Following the burglary and some stolen money orders that were cashed, Kitts told Brian that it was Allen who robbed the market. Brian then confronted Allen's son and Clarence Ray Allen himself, who both denied it. But he was convicted of burglary and first-degree murder and sent to prison to serve a life sentence on March 16, 1978. While he was incarcerated at Folsom State Prison, he met Billy Ray Hamilton, and Clarence Ray Allen plotted to kill the people who had informed on him, which gave him prison time. Billy Ray Hamilton was paroled and picked up by Clarence Ray Allen's son at a bus station, where he asked for weapons to carry out the revenge crimes. And on September 4, 1980, Billy Ray Hamilton and his girlfriend, Connie Barbo, went to Friends Market around closing time, whereby they rounded up the people working in the store and searched for a safe. Hamilton then asked Charlotte Witz for the keys to the safe and was given the keys. 
It was later learned that Billy Ray Hamilton shot him at close range with the shotgun. Billy Ray then came to the back room and asked Douglas White where the safes were kept. White stated he did not know, and Hamilton then shot him at close range in the chest and stomach. The last person to be killed at close range by Billy Ray was Josephine Rocha, and it appears that Billy Ray attempted to kill another person named Rias, but Rias covered his face with his left arm, and the blast hit his arm, blowing off most of the tissue and shattering his elbow. Hamilton and Barbo then checked on the other three victims to make sure that they were dead. Hamilton was later arrested as being a suspect in a Modesto robbery and for assault with a deadly weapon. Among his possessions when he was arrested was an address book with the name of Clarence Ray Allen, and Allen was later convicted of three counts of first-degree murder with special circumstances and sent to California's death row at San Quentin on December 2, 1982. He ended up being executed by lethal injection on January 17, 2006. He is the last known person to be executed by the state of California. And, in his last words, Taken from the movie Little Big Man, starring Dustin Hoffman, were okay, it is a good day to die. Thank you very much. I love you all. Goodbye. Billy Ray Hamilton also was placed on San Quentin's death row and is seen in this group picture here with other Aryan Brotherhood members and associates. Understand while he was housed there, he got into some problems with the Mexican Mafia, mostly behind Curtis Price's mouth, who is an Aryan Brotherhood member that I've talked about in previous episodes. Understand in December 2001, Billy Ray Hamilton was hit by the MN, but was still considered to be a stand up guy, and the MN never held that grudge against him for defending his Aryan brother, as that's what the Mexican Mafia was supposed to do with their fellow carnales. Billy Ray Hamilton, aka Little Blue, died of cancer on October 22, 2007, being 58 years of age. You can read more about the relationship between Clarence Ray Allen and Billy Ray Hamilton in a book called Hands Through Stone, written by James Ardas, who is a retired appeals court judge in California. There was a James Edward Hardy, who was out of Los Angeles. I show that he had C number 42067. I show that he was arrested in Salt Lake City, Utah, in the late 70s, and allegedly was involved in a murder in Utah DLC in 1979. However, it appears he got off on that case. He was arrested for assault with a deadly weapon in 1982 in California and given C number 42067. Understand then he paroled on that, but then came back for a homicide in 1991 under H number 11980 and was given a life sentence. Hardy was convicted and sentenced to death in Los Angeles for the 1984 murders of Nancy Morgan and her son, Mitchell Morgan. He had been tried with two co-defendants, Mark Riley and Clifford Morgan, who was the husband and father of the victims. Clifford was convicted of hiring Riley and Hardy to kill his family so he could collect insurance money. Hardy ended up appealing his case and was freed from death row on February 14, 2019, after pleading guilty to two counts of first-degree murder in exchange for a suspended death sentence and release on parole. There was a George Hart, who understand was part of the Blue Norris car when he was in California, and was one of the first Aryan Brotherhood members sent to the feds in the 1970s under BOP number 05035-021. George Harp, an individual named Johnny Hall, robbed and stabbed inmate Charles Cox, BOP number 92906-131, to take over his loan shark business. Cox survived his attack and requested protective custody. George Harp was close to many Aryan Brotherhood members in California, as well as associates like Eddie Bunker, who was mentioned in the B last name episode. In June of 1980, George Harp sent a message to A.B. Associate Everett Van Burkett to let him know that Barry Mills wanted inmate Robert Hogan killed. Van Burkett then stabbed Hogan to death as soon as he could on June 8, 1980. He speaks here about the early days of the Brotherhood. I knew of 40 or 50 that were killed by some members of the Aryan Brotherhood in, in, in some time in one prison or another a guy that we wanted to become a member, and if they wanted to become one, and some of us, me or one of the leaders, would take the guy off and talk to him. Do you want to become an Aryan Brotherhood? There's certain things you got to agree to, and there's no fooling around with this. This is uh, it's forever. You may sometimes be called to uh, make a move on somebody, and that means kill them. 
Uh, there's no two ways about it. It might be a friend of yours, and you've got to do it. So we started rackets, booking the ball games and uh, putting out tickets and selling dope. We would smuggle in drugs and sell those. We had a loan shark business going in different prisons, and guys would have to pay us usually double. We needed money. A lot of our families outside needed money. I mean, just because you're in prison, you, you still got to support your wife or something. You got to do something. When you hear a guy screaming, there's a certain sound in the prison, and it reverberates through the whole prison when a guy, a lot of times, will be screaming, and you just can hear it, and, and you know what's going on, and you may turn a corner and you can smell the blood. It's, uh, everybody knows the, the threat's there. You don't realize how afraid people are in prison. I never knew that. Later on, virtually took over the crank market in California. Anybody that made and distributed uh, methamphetamines in California had to pay a price to the Aryan Brotherhood. And two or three guys refused and they were killed. And so then everybody was no problem. Then they started paying. I understand that. There's John Henry Turtle Harper, who was out of Ventura, but I also show had ties to Washington State. And I show he was incarcerated in the feds at Marion State Prison on BOP number 56976-065. At that time, he had already been made an Aryan Brotherhood member, as he had several ranks. Around 1983 or 1984, John Turtle Harper hit a prisoner named Hollywood at USP Lompoc. Evidently, the Aryan Brotherhood Commission had ordered it due to the fact that Hollywood had testified in a homicide case against Mexican Mafia member Steve Medina when he killed a D.C. black by the name of Ronald Crowder at Terre Haute. This contract hit had been ordered by Mexican Mafia Commission member Adolf Champ Reynoso and Mexican Mafia shot caller Ronnie Brusino as a favor to the Aryan Brotherhood. Turtle Harper stabbed Hollywood, who escaped death by jumping into a vacant cell and slamming the cell door shut until authorities arrived to save him. I show Harper was released from federal custody in January 1995. He then was sent to CDC under H number 23594 and understand was housed at Corcoran as well as Pelican Bay in the 1990s. John Turtle Harper was housed in Pelican Bay D6 when Aaron Marsh was killed by Gary Luttrell. I show he was charged on the RICO case in the year 2002, but I believe stayed in CDC. Ronnie Harpo Harper out of Fresno. Harpo Harpo was also present when Billy Buzzard Harris got shot in the groin and Chuko Windeker was also involved in that fight against the blacks. I show he was an AB member at San Quentin in the 1970s under B number 1716, but had dropped out by 1976. It was Billy Buzzer Harris, who I show did YA time in 1962, was on YA parole and got a violation in 1965, whereby he was assigned B number 5608. I show he was at CTF Soledad. In January 1971, when the Aryan Brotherhood got into it with the blacks. In that incident, three black prisoners were killed by guard O.P. Miller, including W.L. Nolan, who was considered a leader for the blacks. It showed that he was sent to the feds in the mid-1970s, but had paroled by 1977. It then showed that he came back into CDC custody in the mid-80s under D number 16018. He paroled on that number, but had several parole violations, and it was often housed at San Quentin. I understand then he came back into custody under T numbers in Thomas, 92358. But I show currently is not in custody. There was a James Jimmy Harris out of Tacoma, Washington. I show that he was an Aryan Brotherhood associate in the feds under BOP number 17678-086. understand that he was a member of the Dirty White Boys and actually helped design a website for them. The Dirty White Boys had members throughout the United States and started off actually as a softball team 
in the federal BOP. This softball team traveled around the United States to different penitentiaries and were able to use that as a recruiting method and later on ended up being validated by the BOP as being a prison gang. I showed that he was deceased on July 5th, 2009. But I'm unsure of the circumstances. If any of you guys did federal time know of a Jimmy Harris from Tacoma, Washington, I'd be interested to know how that went down. There's a Sid Hartsville, who I understand was an AB associate when he was at Folsom Prison under C number 8124, but evidently had given up information on the game. And I remember talking to him on Sea Yard at New Folsom around 1988 and that he felt very bad about that and didn't have a very good reputation amongst the convicts for that reason. I seem to remember him being a dope fiend, which is not uncommon for most of these guys. There was a Joe, a.k.a. Jojo Hayes, out of L.A. I understand he was a Nazi lowrider who put in enough work to be considered to be made a, a brother in the brand. When he had D number 5432, understand that he got in a little bit of a cross from messing with Elliot Grizzle's wife and was indicted on a RICO case, whereby he was given BOP number 02509-748. But I show was released from the BOP in October 2016. And last today we have Brian Deadeye Healy, who I understand was an Aryan Brotherhood member in the 1980s through 1990s. Healy was known as Deadeye because he had a glass left eye and was known as being an associate in 1985 and was granted full membership in 93. However, he was ordered to kill Ox Rufo in February 1996 on orders of Blinky Griffin. He dropped out in 1997, feeling betrayed that he had murdered his friend Ox Rufo by strangulation under the belief that it was a sanctioned hit, when in all reality it appears to be personal by Robert Blinky Griffin, due to the fact that Ox Rufo was the bodyguard and one of the closest allies of his arch enemy Wendell Blue Norris, when they were both housed at Folsom and had a war against Blinky and his faction. Brian Deadeye Healy became a witness against the ABs after the assassination of Aaron Marsh in 1993. Marsh was killed, and Elliot Grizzle was convicted of his murder in February of 1999. Marsh was murdered in D4 Pod at Pelican Bay Shoe when he was strangled by his cellmate Gary Luttrell on July 25th, 1997. Elliot Grizzle's name, as well as Blinky Griffin's name, was mentioned in that case. For that testimony, it is said that Blinky Griffin ordered Healy's execution. And so, I'll have to end it right there. We still have a lot of names to cover under the H last name. Hopefully you'll have a very blessed day and always remember to give thanks to God. Hallelujah. Amen. For now, this is Gabe Morales signing off for Gangsters, Cops, and Politicians. An Aryan brother is without a care. He walks where the weak and heartless won't dare. And if by chance he should stumble or lose control, his brothers are there to help reach his goal. For a worthy brother, no need is too great. He need not ask, fulfillment's his fate. For an Aryan brother, death holds no fear. Vengeance will be his, through his brother still here. For the brotherhood means just what he implies. A brother's a brother, till that brother dies. And if he is loyal and never lost faith, in each brother's heart there will always be a place. So a brother I am, and will always be, even after my life is taken away from me. I'll lie down content, knowing I stood, head held high, walking proud in the brotherhood. White People power. that are older know what time White it is, but it's just business. Yeah.